Not even a wall can stop Kyle Busch. Hi, I'm Amber Wilson and welcome to CBSSports.com's NASCAR report. A loose lug nut caused him problems and cost him track position, and on multiple occasions, he would hit the wall. But unlike other drivers that went into the concrete and out of commission, Kyle Busch was able to keep going. Sure, the right side of his car wasn't visually pleasing, but the wild racing paid off as the M&M's Toyota found victory lane at Darlington, the third win for Bush this season. He added 61 more points onto his hold of first place in the latest standings. After being on the wrong end of a wreck last week involving Bush, Dale Earnhardt Jr. managed to pull home a fourth place finish. He sits solidly in third behind Jeff Burton. The only other driver with three runs so far is Carl Edwards, and he found himself crossing the finish line over three seconds after Bush. And despite not winning a race so far, Jeff Gordon continues to silently creep up in points. His third place finish bumps him three spots and into 10th. We've got the All-Star Challenge coming up, and for that and all things NASCAR, we bring in Pete Pistoni. And Pete, before we get to that, let's talk about what happened at Darlington first, Kyle Busch. He continues to tear through the early part of the NASCAR season. What's been the key to his success? Well, certainly one of the keys to the success is Joe Gibbs Racing. That team, to me, is the cream of the crop in NASCAR this year. Beyond what Hendrick Motorsports did last year, at least up till now, Joe Gibbs Racing with Denny Hamlin winning, Kyle Busch being so good, and even Tony Stewart competing, not winning yet, but being in contention every week. I think JGR is right on top of the game right now. Kyle Busch, in my mind, has come into his own. We know we knew he had a lot of talent. He showed flashes of success in winning races at Hendrick Motorsports. But now, at 23 years old, he's harnessing that talent and I think showing everybody what he can do when he gets the equipment uh, like he's in. I've said it before and I'll say it again, though. Kyle Busch is his own worst enemy. If he can harness his talent as well as harnessing his emotions, in my mind, then we are talking about a possible championship this year. Pete, while Bush took the checkered flag Sunday night in Darlington, Greg Biffle went from starting from the pole and leading the first half of the race to 43rd due to mechanical problems. He obviously wasn't very happy. Do you think he'll stay with Roush Fenway when his contract is up at the end of the season? Yeah, Greg was very upset. Uh, he had the field covered, and that's not the first time, as he said in his post-race uh, comments, that uh, equipment failures and other problems have really plagued him. And in my mind... Unless there's some other shuffling that goes on, there's really nowhere for Greg Biffle to go. A lot of people are talking about Tony Stewart. If he does leave the 20 team, maybe he goes over there. We'll see. I still don't believe Tony Stewart's going to leave the Joe Gibbs Racing team. Uh, and, of course, Richard Childress Racing has that fourth seat open, so I believe that would be a possibility. I still feel that Biffle will stay with Roush Fenway Racing, and they will get a contract extension because Carl Edwards has been running well. Uh, that team still has the potential to give Biffle a good car every week, and I think once Greg gets back to victory lane, he'll feel a little bit better. All right, Pete, no points coming this weekend, but big money will be on the line Saturday night at the annual Sprint All-Star Challenge at Lowe's Motor Speedway. What's the format this year, and what strategies will drivers and teams use to try and win the $1 million prize? Yeah, it's the old checkers or wreckers. You're going to hear that 100 times on the broadcast on Saturday night. It's four segments this year of 25 laps each. That's what will make up the uh, All-Star Challenge. A couple of drivers will come in from the preliminary race, and then one driver will be voted in by fan vote. You know, in terms of strategy, Amber, I don't know really how you play a strategy in this race because it is these short segments. I think you've got to get to the front. I think in the first segment, you got to just save your equipment and be there for that last 25 laps because that's when you put it all on the line. And, uh, you know, with a million dollars at the end of the line, we've seen it every year we've had this now, uh, that's when everything goes kind of wild, and those last few laps are usually pretty crazy. All right, and right after the All-Star Challenge at Lowe's, the field races again at Lowe's. Can drivers learn anything to help them prepare for the Coca-Cola 600 the following week, Pete? Well, I think they can, and I think that's going to make this race even that much more important. Uh, in the past, you know, the All-Star race has just been kind of the All-Star race and anything goes, but... I think these teams are going to try to learn as much as they can because, as you said, this car has not run competitively at uh, Lowe's Motor Speedway. They tested the new Spring Cup car, but we know testing and race conditions are very different. So, yeah, they're going to see how this car handles in traffic. And uh, when we go back the next week for the Coca-Cola 600, the notes from the test and the notes from this race will be things they're certainly going to go back to and hope that they've got to put together for that big 600-mile race on Memorial Day weekend.
All right, Pete, thanks for joining us, and we look forward to hearing from you this weekend from Lowe's. And don't you forget to come back next week when we take a look at the Coca-Cola 600. But for now, if you missed anything here today, stop, refresh, and rewatch. For Pete Bistoni, I'm Amber Wilson.